Tilda Chapter 30, Background to Earth Back at the awesome Atone, Zami is resting on a new soft bed within the vehicle while recovering. Nicole is still annoyed with Hailwolf because the Earth is now at risk and so the awesome Atone is speeding to Earth as quickly as possible. Thanks to one of the Earth's innovations of light speed. Hailwolf does try and apologize, thinking of it as a heroic moment, but only to realize that she has got a whole world in danger, now those bad feelings have all come back. And all she thinks she can do is run away after letting entire fractions down. Hailwolf admits this, and she states about leaving, but Arvin encourages her to stay, holding her hand while making his soft animalistic calls. On top of that, Nicole was also disappointed that Hailwolf didn't know about Ozona's prediction of the craft, which Hailwolf generally didn't know about. Hailwolf also explains what she has sensed from Ozona, and sensing the air is not the most blatant action from Ozona. Nicole however doesn't know what to say, but that feeling of letting down is what she can relate to, so she keeps Hailwolf nearby, knowing both of them do have the chance to make up. The Legion has arrived at the base as the awesome Atone lands thanks to drone mode, Mike sees them. And they all go inside the Legion building. Mike after being told instantly that the Earth is in danger, and so the servicemen are all given a code red and all get ready for another attack, but they all don't know where the strike will take place, so they need to keep an open mind about it. However, Retron has set some traps that zap everyone in the Legion building after discovering that Zami seems to absorb all that Ozona provided to Zami, and we would say provide because Zami looks like he is producing more powerful looking lightning. Everyone is now physically stunned. And it was done because of Retron, Retron overhears that this was the Legion's fault as he was sneaking near the landing awesome Atone, and so he will get the next victory for himself, and with the Legion lying down on the ground. The Legion was barely walking after the run from earlier as well as the zapping from Ozona. Whilst they are all on the floor of the Legion building, they all crawl to one of the cupboards where they can get hold of painkillers. Retron takes over the next mission as he leads the servicemen. Alongside releasing more controversial information about the Legion, slowly uploading while he locks the Legion inside their building. Ozona's new chain is completed and is about to hit the City of Earth. Thanks to the coordinates and other details like the name of the galaxy to find out where the Earth is. With this new chain around, the lightspeed tunnel is activated, and the Stonos are about to enter Earth and diminish any security there so Ozona can rule that world with another iron fist. Ozona however is still worn out fighting a titan as powerful as Dian, and now Ozona needs some rest, letting all the Stonos get going as they all head to fight Earth. Ozona will use the communication spell to keep tabs on every single Stono, he will join once he is ready to go. And it shouldn't take long. The servicemen all crowd around the city considering where the attacks are happening, and the servicemen are so far at a big disadvantage. All through servicemen are getting fired at and attacked up close with little control. Making the servicemen either go for cover to try and hold back the Stonos and even their Roxy Serpents which act as air cover, and they act as charging balls with no projectiles. These Roxy Serpents are no less a target and these Stonos who do occur from the top of the chain. See and tell Ozona via the communication spell that the base is what is providing the security for the whole world. They tell Ozona this as they see other servicemen leave the base alongside vehicles like the servicemen crafts and the 4x4s start to come too. Some servicemen were sent ahead of time as they wondered where this chain would land, but some were already in the city. Back at the base, the Legion is all trying to get up, but thanks to a vehicle notification, the awesome Atone's air technology has been damaged by Retron. He not only had time to do this while the Legion was unconscious, but he disabled the flying because by wrecking the whole vehicle. He would have been more guilty, if he managed to do it without any CCTV spotting him, now how will the clan get to the battle? The Legion still needs time to recover first, and they chat as they try and get going. Not to mention they even managed to contact Pod thanks to using their collaptors, a holographic phone call, Pod has made it and has Dian's body as he goes back up to the surface with the Tengus in the coves. While everyone is uncertain, Nicole has an idea, use the Tengus star to revive Dian and find a way to attack the planet, after hearing the city attack, the awesome Atone must go on wheels to help. Pod nearly refuses at first, but as the planning persists, to the shock of all including Mike. Nicole admits her controversial history. Pod was about to go on a rant on how these Tengus despite a couple of minutes had been more open than Nicole, 
Nicole had to quickly win over Pod somehow, Pod needed to help all races, not just the Tangus. According to Nicole, she was responsible for an accident when she was getting revenge on a bully of her own, and she ended up a young offenders for most of her life. Until Mike looks at her ancestors' history and sees potential in her being a much better person to fight for the right reason and also making her realize how to perform more moral actions. This is part of what she didn't want to reveal. And the Legion not only understands this but also sees why she didn't want to reveal it in the first place, this does get everyone on the right foot, and the openness revives a sense of trust. To avoid Ozona's mistakes, the Legion will fight without a facade. Being honest as they help the residents, not ashamed to hide anything, but acknowledge everything. Mike was about to tell Nicole to not talk about it, but as the Legion opened to her more including Pod via a call using the Calapter, Nicole showed that she has been keeping something that has been holding in for so long. It was a relief for her, and perhaps Mike could do the same, seeing potential in revealing a certain history and in the right way too. Not to mention Mike states that Retron not only wants the city battle to be his success as he wins but he has released more about the Legion, including Nicole's history, and so all the Legion can do now is be decent heroes. They know that they have to prioritize the fight at the city rather than trying to beat the release of information which would be around by now, and they get the awesome Atone going, on wheels, opening the garage part of the Legion building and leave the base's land as fast as possible. Meanwhile, on Ozona's planet, Diane starts to get better after being revived from the star, and Pod wonders what to do, he has an idea to flood the planet, but he also has second thoughts because of him being a Morphil, a race that has caused a lot of destruction. But Diane reminds Pod that net robots were also a race of destruction, and Diane's more significant actions allowed Diane to redefine what net robots should have been, especially presented by Diane and even Zemian. Pod intakes this and so both of them come up with a plan. Pod will flood Ozona's planet all over and Diane will destroy the chains and even help either Pod or the Legion. Diane for so long has been busy with all of these Zionthor goons to the point where he had lost time to get rid of Ozona's reign but now is a good time. Even both agree that while the Stonos should be spared, those who attack and are fully into Ozona are the ones that sadly have to go. If anyone is willing to kill the Legion, sometimes it's a kill or be killed situation. As Pod and Diane advance, Pod even takes the chance to ask if Diane had sorted out the Morphils before, and whilst Diane admits that he remembers fighting an army of them a hundred years ago, he had fought them from time to time. But sometimes they can be well hidden and pose threats sparingly compared to other dangerous races. Pod after hearing this has a few ideas for what to do once Ozona and many others are out of the way. Even Diane will try and prioritize sorting out Mechajor and the Morphil someday. Knowing they don't seem the change, but now, both of them have a big task ahead of them. More servicemen have arrived in the city as the Stonos start to advance in bigger numbers, running down the chain. This is Nefeti City, and it is well known for its square which the Legion visited. So getting destroyed already made some residents sad alongside being scared. The residents try and hide in buildings and other hidden areas to avoid the fire. There had been some destruction like falling rubble and fired shots which accidentally caused some resident deaths despite the Stonos being tasked to avoid them. But like any battle, you may have your primary targets but that doesn't mean that no one else can get hurt. As ordered by Ozona, they only fight the servicemen, alongside some dim-witted residents who try and fight them. The servicemen do the best they can do by using their abilities, while the cover and numbers are there, the Stonos are not slowing down. But then, the Legion in their awesome atone, on wheels, starts to come around, the turrets are getting fired, and even thanks to Zamis' increased lightning abilities. He powers the vehicle to fire more powerful lightning, which can branch out to kill multiple Stonos far more compared to his former lightning. While Zami is driving, he is firing lightning ahead, making Zami slightly cockier, Nicole and Hailwolf are at the side turrets. Mike at the top turret and Arvin fighting off any Stonos who jump on the vehicle. The Legion eventually makes it to where the chain has landed, this not only relieves the servicemen, but the Stonos see the Legion as the primary target, they update Ozona about this via the communication spell. Ozona contacts them back, telling them to mainly focus on the Legion but keep out for other dangers like the servicemen, which Ozona recently learnt about thanks to their communication spells, knowing that the servicemen aren't that intimidating compared to the Legion. 
As the Legion arrives at the center of the battle, the awesome Atone does get fired at many times, losing its wheels. Even all the turrets start to lose their function no thanks to the shots and whacking from the stonos. Which was more constant compared to the time when the Legion tried and leave Planet Gar. The Legion all get out, and Nicole has a plan, keep the battle near the chain, get the servicemen to keep the residents safe and unload all their projectiles to the incoming stono army. Clearing them from the ground, also stun them but killing them if too vicious. Whilst Diane already has an idea to get stonos to turn, he also thought to gather any stonos or survive the city battle once the battle is over. Zamis' updated power enables him to wipe away large numbers of the stonos, even reaching those who are at the bottom of the chain. Nicole while sticking to her laser gun and even firing at any individual stonos who are trying to escape the crowd. Alongside her riot shield to defend herself and others from the shots from the stonos. Arvin and Hailwolf while having minor projectiles mainly fight up close, defending those who are firing from afar. And even Mike is helping the servicemen who are trying to help either the fighting ones or the ones trying to help the residents, firing his laser revolver and his assisting drone which also fires lasers. Meanwhile, Pod and Dian have also started their plan, to destroy the shell of the Tengus planet. A plan which Dian tells the Legion about, explaining a potential tidal change to the fight. This is what Pod will mainly focus on and while Dian will be a big help, Dian will also take the chance to remove the chains from all the planets, even moving their planets to their original spots. Showing off the kind of strength Dian has. While doing this, Pod and Dian do keep in mind that not all stonos are hostile, so they will only kill the stonos who are trying to attack. But the rest will be left alone as they have access to the Roxy Serpents to leave the planet if they are not totally into Ozona's scheme. However, even when any innocent stonos are at risk yet want to leave, either Pod or Dian will try and save them. Regardless, despite a bad shot in the leg earlier, Pod regains strength and starts to flood the whole planet, even more motivated as the Tangus support Pod by cheering him. Even using the likes of shape-shifting ice and explosive fire to destroy the whole planet until it is all water again while also allowing time for any innocent stonos to get going. Dian aids the planet's destruction at first by firing at the sandstone and flying into it considering how physically tough he is. Ozona who is still recovering starts to see this from afar, making all the stonos and serpents go through the chain leading to Earth. Using his communication spell to explain whether they are to continue fighting or return to their homeland where they can settle. While Ozona also senses that the Roxy serpents are being used to get the stonos out of the planet by flying upwards. Ozona thinks at first that the stonos are trying any way to get going, but then he starts to see that not all stonos are on his side, which he wonders, but that is not the focus of his mind. So, he goes to his castle and uses his telekinesis and force field ability to not only get the castle up in the air but enable him to fly through space, making the space vacuum not a problem. As Pod starts to see that the planet's destruction is good enough, seeing that the land is mostly spare, Pod then uses water to get himself below the castle just before the force field solidifies, flying with Ozona. Pod creates all sorts of water activity to muddle with Ozona's senses after considering Ozona was able to predict the awesome Atone earlier. Both are high in the air, and the land is full of water, with no chains attached, and no stonos. Even the Tengus are relieved that their dry cove is now filled to the brim with water. With all the chains removed and the planets back to their original spots, pleasing all the races of those planets, Dian starts to help the Earth moving the Earth's chain to Mars, where all the stonos inside are moved and are given the chance to stop fighting. Once the chain is dropped onto Mars, some stonos attack while the others run on their Roxy Serpent, and effortlessly get rid of all the attacking stonos, even all the Roxy Serpents considering they are only mindless statues. Throughout Dian's scheme, Dian has mentioned to all the friendly stonos to start making their way to their world, and happy with the instructions, the stonos get going, even drop their weapons. The other stonos dragged to Mars however try and argue back at Dian, trying to fire at him and argue back at him. Dian strictly tells them that following Ozona will no longer be worth it, his reign has gone on for too long. Ozona has restricted freedom massively, and Dian even talks about how their lives will be much better with their freedom instead of assistant the lack of freedom in many other places. This does manage to get the rest of the stonos to follow the others to their world, all on the same wavelength 
and they all agree that maybe aiding another leader might not be the best course for their lives. Then Dian comes down to the city to help the Legion and servicemen, reducing the rest of the numbers, and even Dian contacted the Legion earlier so that the Legion knows who to take down or who to kill. And so, all the good Stonos are guided to evacuate by Dian and the rest of the Stonos are going down, even Dian updates the Legion that Pod is about to enter Earth alongside Ozona, making the Legion prepare for the next task. At the city, the Legion is working together far better, bouncing off each other well and mixing their abilities, even the servicemen are not only a part of this ability mixing but they see the Legion for what they are, heroes. The servicemen despite their help mainly help the residents, who also see a side to the Legion which is Traw, and the residents are taken further away from the fighting. Arvin and Halewolf bond, as Halewolf feels more like a part of something but at the same time, the carnage is getting too much for her. And she cannot fake herself as someone who wants to fight all the time, and even Arvin starts to see this. Even then, Nicole supports everyone, including residents and servicemen, even talking about her other events such as how she used to be part of a burgled house of many thieves when she was very young, and all she could do was leave the house, and so comparing this to what is happening now, it helps the residents to counter the fear. As the battle starts to round up, Zami is starting to enjoy his power too much, something which Halewolf reminds Zami to not go too far, which makes Zami calm down. Whilst doing so, Zami then sees his bully from earlier, seeing he is about to get shot at by some Stonos as the bully attempts to fight the Stonos. Zami uses his lightning to jump in front of the bully and zaps all those Stonos all at once, saving the bully. The bully becomes thankful and apologetic for everything as Zami sees fear in his eyes, and then Zami offers the bully to some nearby servicemen. The bully thanks Zami, as Zami is seen more as a heroic figure. And a cool one at that, with the bully thinking that the rest of the team is cool too. Throughout this fight, Retron had the lead regarding the servicemen, but over time, he saw that the servicemen were taken by the Legion and Mike, disappointing Retron. When he thought he was going to be the same sniper again with the same high number of killstreaks, it is sadly low, despite managing to hit a good few, but once the battle reaches the endpoints, Retron gives up, wondering when he will shine again. Retron has been firing from a high building once a serviceman craft got him up there, but he uses the rest of the battle's time to get to the ground floor, hiding himself from everyone. And so, the battle is over. And everyone focuses on making sure the residents are okay, and the mess starts to get clear, even Dian helps quicken this process alongside the servicemen and the Legion. Dian also performs the same way when taking down any army, flying about for any spare army members, clearing large crowds, knocking into the enemy time via flying force and always shooting accurately. Over time, Ozona while still worn out, starts to see that he is losing this battle, the earth will not be taken as easy as other battles. Especially as the Earth is so innovative and evolutionary compared to other planets. But he also starts to see that planet Gar is flooding to the point of ripping the land apart, making Ozona's world go back to the Tengus world. Ozona, while using the communication spell, he tells his army to either join the fight with him or start escaping back to their main home world. But as Ozona finds out later, no other Stonos show up, and he plans to see the Stonos later, giving them a good telling off. The Tangus are happy and Pod sees that the Stonos are leaving. Even saving one or two earlier. Pod himself sees if the Stonos are keen on Ozona still, and it turns out that a good few are not, fed up with Ozona's vicious way of ruling. Pod also sees the success of his plan as he rides off Ozona's fortress. Reaches significant speeds while also not too far from Earth. These Stonos often like to benefit any leader, but Ozona is one ruler that not many would want to benefit from anyway anymore. Dian earlier manages to break all the chains, enabling all the planets to go free. And these chains are all placed on Mars where they could be reproposed later. As Ozona nearly makes it, the Legion decides to prepare themselves, Dian will consider joining the Legion but he focuses on helping the city, some people are trapped in rubble. It is also unknown whether Ozona will do anything powerful on a massive scale, Someone has to aid the destruction and the presentation of death while the Legion fights the center of it all. The city battle starts to calm down, the chain is gone. The Stonos are either dead or escaped and the residents and servicemen are safer, even the dead Stonos' bodies are gathered to add to the cleaning, but the trouble is not done yet. 
Ozona and his fortress have entered the earth, and he is going to get himself a new planet. By decreasing all of the security and any other leadership, and he will do this by creating a thunderstorm all around the earth. The storm begins, and the legion is going to face him, even finding out that Pod is within the fortress too. And the servicemen will spread everywhere to protect the many leaders and more all around the earth. The legion however does get a ride from one of the flying servicemen crafts to get to Ozona, and even a couple of other servicemen with their crafts come to support the legion. With the castle hovering down to the sea, the servicemen crafts start to get going now that all the legion members are on, except Pod, who is making his way to Ozona, very slowly. Even Pod makes the sea waves wilder to distract Ozona, and not to mention. Ozona already has his eyes on the servicemen crafts that are facing him. Ozona starts to unleash the storm full on, after seeing the base and seeing where the servicemen crafts are coming from, the storm is to build around the base. Ozona also tries to sense any other type of security that is within the planet, but as that is tricky to determine as he is only sensing air, he will deal with it once he passes the first step, what's right in front of him. As the servicemen start firing at Ozona, Ozona uses his force fields to defend himself from the lasers and starts to form lightning to fire at the ships. This results in most of the servicemen crafts going down by Ozona, and sadly eventually all of them who are trying to help the Legion. Regardless, the Legion makes it to the castle. Everyone jumps out of the servicemen craft, and they face Ozona, now Zami is closer to Ozona, Zami is magnetically drawing Ozona's lightning towards Zami, and Zami just manages to absorb it. Nicole then has an idea, Ozona's sword must be destroyed. And destroying the sword is what will stop the storm, and will reduce Ozona's ability to fight. Now that Pod has shown up, it will be Pod and Nicole to try and destroy the sword while Arvin and Hailwolf are attempting to fight Ozona up close to try and distract him. Alongside Zami now that Ozona decides to not use lightning again, even when Zami is thrown out of the building, Ozona's lightning is not going anywhere no matter where Zami is. Not to mention Ozona struggles to kill Zami because of not only the other Legion members getting in the way, but Ozona is performing a lot of energy-based abilities, the storm, the levitating castle and trying to fight the Legion, and not to mention the servicemen are still sent to try and help the Legion thanks to Mike's orders. Ozona uses the storm to prevent any of the servicemen from helping the Legion as a couple more crafts come to join. Plus, Ozona is levitating the castle to try and decrease the air around them, making the Legion potentially lose more oxygen. Even Mike and Retron for now concentrate on protecting the people, base and president as they spread the servicemen around while looking out for each other for what would be one of the worst storms in a long time. Over time, Ozona becomes a hard opponent regardless. The sword moves around telekinetically, using his telekinesis to keep the legion away from him and Ozona rising the castle into the atmosphere also puts off the legion, Ozona cleverly has a force field around him to counter the cold and the oxygen, meaning everyone is running out of time. Ozona however cannot strengthen the force field around him to counter physical force as he is already straining himself with all that power. So the legion has a good strategy, Nicole fires from afar, and both Pod, Arvin, and Hailwolf face Ozona up close. A chance for Hailwolf to get her back on Ozona. In the end, Ozona starts getting weaker, Pod freezes the sword and Hailwolf breaks it which stops all of his abilities and a good beat-up gets Ozona not only on the ground but also starts dying on his own. Even the energy coming from Ozona's sword is captured as Pod forms a thick icy block around it, containing it well enough but he would need to add to the ice over time because the energy is hard to contain. His alien race may have good longevity and know that the air can help. But a lack of it can wear off any individual quickly. These beings often use strong winds to be carried by them, and Ozona manages to do that with his power instead of waiting for the natural wind to do so. Even Zami has a moment of vengeance and considers finishing Ozona off using his more powerful lightning considering Ozona harmed Zami earlier. Zami doesn't like being belittled after all but he decides not to, not letting another side of him hinder his perspective and image anymore. Zami at times does get carried away with the power he has, but even he understands that he cannot use power to hide his real self. Ozona dies slowly on his own. Making the fortress go down now his power is no longer present but Pod controls water via his trident to slow down the fall of the fortress, enabling the legion to land safely, 
and the Legion will generate ideas for what to do with Ozona's body. But now they must return to the city. And it turns out that the damage and death have been less than everyone thought. The Legion does have one more obstacle, facing the public after seeing the newly released information about them. All the Legion can do is admit this and be honest about it. And Nicole acts as the speaker as she manages to get the public to quiet down. Yes, Pod was part of a vicious race, yes Nicole was a young offender, and yes Sammy bullied someone earlier but in the end. These are flawed yet good-hearted beings who want to save the Earth and even help other planets too. This makes some of the residents cheer and the rest more open-minded about them, pleased with how controlled everything was. Retron sees that this plan didn't work. And after Mike contacted the president earlier now Mike has more solid backing for how and why Retron did it, the president wants to see Retron. Retron earlier demanded the laptop back Mike did offer it but he also used a small memory stick to copy the information to it without Retron noticing. Adding to the proof. Later, Retron tries to apologize to the president, while pretending to be sorry, even trying to justify stunning the Legion in their building, and he tries to defend himself by saying it was self-defense but no one buys it. Retron tries to justify his actions more by saying that once the Legion was trying to get going, they were threatening Retron to get out of the way, but once again, no one believes him. While he wasn't spotted by witnesses nor CCTV as he performed this stunning alongside disabling the awesome Atones flight, this decision was half expected. Both Mike and the President are aware that Retron dislikes the Legion. And he used to perform similar situations when he was getting overtaken by others, always wanting to stay on top. When Retron is given another chance, he will have slightly less power and more of an eye on him, making Retron annoyed, but he remains opportunistic. What makes it worse for Retron is that Pod confronts Retron outside of the President's building, as he and the others now know that Retron was who released the footage. Not to mention the private editors who helped Retron were also arrested. But they do admit that Retron was the driving force, they only wanted the money. Pod gets at Retron by saying that cannot bring down the Legion in that manner and that the Legion is the best option whether Retron likes it or not. So Pod swims back into the nearby water, leaving an angered Retron. Who has not given up, his next option is to use the Netro that was all collected after Orphean's attack. He starts to think of ways to bring himself back up to where he wants to be while also thinking of other ways to bring down the Legion.